All right, let's go. Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. Make sure you guys subscribe to Stranger Palooza here. Um, this is going to be something new. We've done military vehicles. We've done all kinds of different things here. RVs. This is my new 2021 Coachman Beyond, which is built on a uh, Ford Transit, a 2020 Ford Transit. Uh, uh, what is this like? It's a Ford Transit. Just Ford, Ford Transit. Transit. I think this is like the high roof, the XLT, and it has the 350. Um, 350 HD. This is the Echo Boost uh, twin turbo engine on it. So I'm I'm just picking this up now. This is actually going to be my office. I'll be able to get on the road, go out, go to shows and different things like that. But I don't know anything about this. So we've got Kyle, and we're obviously at Sunshine State RV. Kyle's going to give me the whole run through here, and I'm going to put it on record here for you guys so you could use it, but mostly so I could refer back to this. Um, Kyle, where should we start? All right, so this is the 3.5 liter EcoBoost twin turbocharged motor. Like I said before, the boost kicks on nice and early on this. You feel it. Now you've test driven this vehicle, so you know that. As soon as yeah. you step on it, you feel that boost pressure kick in, the torque kicks in. Yeah. You know it. I really like these motors. Um, there is a maintenance schedule for this vehicle. Okay. During the duration you have this under warranty, this must go to a Ford dealer. Um, if you do take it anywhere else, you could potentially void the warranty on it. Okay. Um, after that time is up, um, you can continue taking it forward, which is what I recommend, but if you have a mechanic you know and trust, you can't take it to him as well. Okay, how often does this go? Every 10,000 miles? Or? So 10,000 miles on an oil change, it does take mm -hmm. full synthetic oil. After about 8,000 miles, a dummy light pops up on the dash. It will okay. tell you, hey, you need to go ahead and change me. You have about 50% life left. Okay. After about that time, between eight and 10,000, you want to go ahead and change it. Okay, right? and I think we've got maybe 41 or something with me doing- I believe so, yeah. Doing the test so. drive on it. So really good engine. I did drive it, lots of pickup with everything in there. Obviously Obviously, I'm going to add a couple, some weight to that. I'm not sure what weight we can add in terms of everything in there, yep. but we'll figure all of that out in here. So we're starting from the outside and going around. Yep. Okay, you are in charge, Kyle. Right. I'm just following you, and I might ask some questions. All right. So you will be driving this vehicle a lot. Um, there are a couple things you want to pay attention to. So typically, when you go on a long distance road trip, you pop your hood, you check your fluid, stuff like that. Do the same thing for this. Okay. So this is your engine coolant level right here. You have a minimum and maximum line. You can see it right there. Mm -hmm. Check this when the engine is cold. When okay. It, when the engine is hot, that level could be anywhere. That's okay. But okay. check this when it's cold. And it needs to be pretty much where it is right yep. now. Okay. So this is for the most part a sealed system. There is a little check spring inside here that will open up and vent off pressure if it needs to, if it's running hot. But for the most part, sealed system, you should not be losing coolant. If you come out here and you pop this hood and this thing's completely empty, you've got an issue. Don't even okay. turn that key on. Okay. The fastest way to break something is to run the engine with no coolant in it. All right. Okay? So very important uh, before I go out on a long trip or something like that, you're yep. saying, right? Yep. Okay. All right. You can check your oil right here. This yellow dipstick is your oil engine oil. What you want to do is pull it out completely take a good clean rag make sure it's clean because you don't want to introduce dirt to the motor mm -hmm. wipe that dipstick off stick it back inside the engine pull it out again and then you get a good accurate reading on your engine oil level again check this when it's cold when it's cold yep. okay there you go this is a recommended oil 5w30 again it is full synthetic okay now once you take it in for your regular maintenance schedule they will tell you hey look it's time to change your oil or we're coming up to that point and they will say go ahead and change your oil be proactive on the maintenance of an RV okay, okay. You do not want to be broke down in the middle of BFE just because, hey, I didn't change a hose, I didn't change a belt, I didn't change fluid, stuff like that. Be proactive on the maintenance on this, okay? okay. Absolutely. Windshield washer fluid goes in right here. There's okay. some in there now, but you can always top it off. Your max level is right there. You can see okay. the line? Yeah, okay. Engine air filter is inside this compartment. Okay. This pickup right here is not for the engine. This is actually for the AC. So if you're on recirc, then you're picking up the cabin air and you're filtering it that way. If you're not on recirc, it's actually picking up from the cowl behind the hood. Okay. And then plums it in through here and through your cabin air filter, which is behind your glove box. All right. Okay. This is brake fluid. You are not gonna mess with this. Let the dealership handle that. Absolutely. Now, if you notice there's no engine battery inside this engine compartment, right. <laughs> the battery is actually in front of the driver's seat and the floorboards where you put your feet. It's not easy to get to. Okay. All right. If you ever need to jumpstart this vehicle, this is how you do it. See this little red cap right here with the positive symbol? Yes. You're going to open this cap up right there. Exposes that stud right there. That stud is live, does go to the battery. Take your red alligator clamp and clamp it down right there. The black is not really well marked. You can see a little symbol right here. Okay. What you want to do is go to this stud right here. Um, okay, I Take see your it. Black alligator clamp and clamp it down right there. So that. Okay, so that's like the ground. Yep. Okay. So hot here, 
ground here. You must ground here. Nothing okay. else inside this no engine bay is going to work. Okay. Yep. And I'm assuming this is the fuse box right yep. here, I guess. Yep. I don't know if we can go in there. Yeah. So let's see. This one, you open up this way. This way, okay. Like that. All right, there we go. So should I really have to mess with these, right? No. Okay. It's very rare you're going to have an engine fuse pop. Okay. Um, you do have ATO 12 volt fuses in the coach side of the vehicle. Okay. It's more likely for those to pop. Typically, it's because someone overloads a circuit. Once we go to the uh, interior, and I can show you where those fuse panels are, I'll go over that a little bit more. Okay, cool. All right. Do you have any questions on the engine bay, powertrain, stuff like that? No, I think that's pretty good. Okay. Um, just a couple other maintenance things. Uh, keep this clean of debris right here. So okay. leaves like to build up, especially if you park this outside. Right. Make sure you clean this out. If you do get a lot of leaf and tree debris inside here, eventually that stuff rots. It can actually rot away the seal right here. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay, so very important to keep the leaves off of that. So anything having to do with maintenance of the engine, mm -hmm. the powertrain, the transmission, the undercarriage, suspension, wheels, stuff like that, you're going to want to take it to Ford and let them take care of that. Anything having to do with the house side, bring it to us. Okay. okay. You've okay. got the house side under warranty as well. We'll take care of that. So let me ask a quick question. A couple actually. So gasoline that goes in this, just yep. regular? Or is so it we have 87 or? in these. Okay. My personal preference is to run 93 octane minimum in a turbocharged vehicle. Okay. The higher the octane, the less likely to cause detonation inside the motor. Um, I would run 93, but we've run 87 in these all day, no issues. Okay, no issues. Yep. And then what about warm up? So let's say I'm going in here, do I need to warm the engine up for some yes. period of time? Okay. Yes, always warm it up. Um, they tell you on the older turbocharged engines that you actually want to actually, once you stop driving, mm -hmm. let it run for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let the turbos themselves cool down. If mm -hmm. you immediately, let's say you're running it hard, mm -hmm. you've been hill climbing, you've been towing something, mm -hmm. and you come in and you immediately shut that thing off, you can cause what's called oil coking inside the turbo. Okay. The turbos get so hot, it actually breaks down that oil and turns into sludge very fast. It decreases uh, your oil life. Okay, so the turbos are there? Yep. You can see the wastegate right there. It's that oh, little okay. silver diaphragm looking piece right, right there. Okay. I'll move my hand out of the way so you can see it. Yeah, let's see if we can get this in one there. This might be easier to see. So there's one on that side. And if you come over here to this oh, side, I see it. Yes. you can see the compressor okay. housing of the turbo right, right there. Yeah. Okay, so on either side. Mm -hmm. All right, very cool. Yeah, looks great in there. Okay. Yep. Any other questions on the front? I'm good for now. Okay. You do have a front facing camera right here. Oh, yep. Uh, that's cool. Yep. So that helps since it's, but you know, it's not that easy to see in front of it. No. When it's kind looking, of like a short nose. Correct. When you're looking over the front of this, you can't see what's directly in front of you. So this helps you if you're getting very close to something. Yeah. And I think there's a button inside that will probably go over that yep. you can press and turn Absolutely. That on. Okay. Very cool. Right. And do we have, we have fog lights out here, yep, I think. You right? do. And then these right here are the radar sensors. So okay. you actually have sensors inside the vehicle that talk to the computer. It will tell you if you're getting too close to something and it will show you the distance that you have to that. Okay, cool. And it's, so I'm guessing it has adaptive cruise control, yes. et cetera. Yep. Okay. If you look right here into the front windscreen, there's a camera right there up front. Yeah. And that's, that is your adaptive cruise control. That's what controls that. That's All the right. sensor's looking for the vehicle in front of you and it's looking for the lanes. Right, okay. Nice. All right. That pretty much covers the front. Do you have any other questions on this? No. Okay. Thanks. All right, we can go ahead and come over to the side. Okay. So this is your fuel door right here. I'm going to go ahead and open this driver's side door to access it. Okay. Pull this little tab right here. It opens this up. You do not have a gas cap. This is the newer Ford design. GM is going to this. Dodge is going to this right. as well. You don't have gas caps. Take your gas, uh, your fill handle, come in here and stick it down inside here. It will push both flapper valves open and let it take gas. Now, your standard gas can, let's say you're driving on the road, you run out of gas for whatever reason, you have a gas can with you, a jerry can. Mm -hmm. Most of those will not push the second flapper valve open. Oh, okay. okay. If you look inside the glove box in there, once we get inside, okay. there's a white funnel inside there. You must stick that funnel down inside if here. If you're pouring in emergency. Yep. Okay. It will push both flapper valves open, then you can take your gas can and pour it through that funnel. Okay. So if you stand here with a, like a gas can, jerry can, you go to add gas to this, it's actually going to start spilling everywhere. Okay, cool. Yep. All right, good to know. This is kind of like the European style. I've, uh, I've had yep. this on yep. like German cars. I'm yeah, Audi a lot guy. of the American manufacturers are going to this right now. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot in this that's more competitive, I think, with mm -hmm. uh, like the Sprinter, the Mercedes vans. So. Yeah, the Mercedes are very nice vehicles. Um, this newer 2021, uh, so it's a 2020 chassis, but the 2021 Coachman Beyond. 
very comparable. I really yeah, like it. I absolutely agree with that. That's why I'm doing it. And more affordable. <laughs> yep. So show you real quick. Let's get in here. Okay. This is to release your hood. Okay. Where my fingers are. There on. you go. Okay. So we'll go ahead and close this up for now. Okay. We'll come back to this once we do the interior. This right here, this is your sewer connection. So if you look down here, you have a three inch cap right here. Mm -hmm. And then you have two blade valves. You have a gray, bleed, nope, black right there. Okay. So you have one connection right there. Um, what you do, once you go to dump your tanks, let's say your black and your gray tank, mm -hmm. um, you spin this cap off. Obviously you drive up to your dump station, spin okay. this cap off. This is a 10 foot, three inch wide sewer hose. This is not yours, this is just my demo model. Okay. Um, come over here and you spin this on. You can see it's got the teeth right here mm -hmm. that connect the same way that, that valve does or that blade. Okay. Does uh, one of those come with this vehicle? Yep. You oh, cool. actually, I believe, get two, if I remember correctly, in this vehicle. You get one that's already stored inside the compartment over there, and then okay. we give you one in our starter kit. Oh, sweet. Comes okay. With the vehicle, so you actually have two. Okay. So, come so over here this, is, this is the sewer pipe. Yep. Okay. So come over here and you spin lock this on. Right. Take this hose and stretch this out and put it down into your dump station. Okay. okay. Once you do that, you come over here and you dump your valves. And I believe this one is just black. Because I don't think there's a gray one on this one. Yeah, I think this is just black right here. Okay. Because I think your gray is further in the rear on this, okay. on this model. So pull your black valve, let everything run out. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people like to buy the either an adapter piece right here that extends out so you mm -hmm. can see what's running through that pipe mm -hmm. or they'll get a different hose that's got a connection piece like this on the end mm -hmm. and you can put an elbow on here and stick that inside your dump station so oh, okay. you can visually see hey I've got nothing else running out of this okay right okay because I think you want to clean this out afterwards right? correct that's okay. what the spray hose is gonna help us with oh but oh, okay so what we want to do is go ahead dump everything out mm -hmm. once it's done come back over here close up my black valve right here mm -hmm. now this one has gray and black tank dump. No, I'm sorry, just a black tank flush on this one. Okay. So this connection right here, you do want to have two separate water hoses for this vehicle. We give you one inside the starter kit. It's a 25 mm -hmm. foot water hose. Mm -hmm. Use that one for your fresh connections, your fresh or your city connection. Okay. Keep a second one with you just to fill up the black tank. Now there is a valve inside here. It's going to prevent the water from coming back. Mm -hmm. I just wouldn't trust it 100%. Okay. So you know? you're you're worried about backwash yeah, exactly. there when you're filling up exactly. the black. The you black don't want tank. to. Whatever your okay. clean water is putting in, you don't want to get that dirty. You damn sure don't want the black going into that. Okay, okay. and then so all the tanks get filled up separately. Yep. Okay. So you have a fresh water tank right here. Okay. Yep, this is your city connection. I'll cover this in a second. Yeah, so se separate hoses for everything. Yep. But make sure you know which one's for the, exactly. the black tank. So your okay. black tank, what you want to do is come back over here and fill this up. Mm -hmm. um, you'll know you're full. You can have... If you have two people with you, one person can be inside monitoring the screen. Mm -hmm. If you have the app on your phone, you can sit here and look at your phone and see when your tank is full. Okay. Go ahead and shut your water off. Come back over here to this mm -hmm. and pull that valve again and right. flush everything out of your black tank. I highly recommend you do this every time you dump your tanks. Okay. Dump out your black tank again. Um, this one has the newer style sensors in it. It's a float okay. system instead of a um, induction current going through it. Mm -hmm. So the old style, you had a ground sensor at different levels of the tank, and once mm -hmm. the water level got up to it, it would send a ground signal through that, tell the computer, hey, this is your level right now. Okay, so just so I understand, when you're doing the black tank, mm -hmm. you want to fill it, flush it all, and then fill it again. Correct. Okay. So you're going to fill it while using it. Okay. Right? So anything that goes through the toilet system is going to go into your black holding tank. Right, okay. You've got to dump that. Once you've dumped your waste out of there, mm -hmm. add water to it, fill it back up, flush it out again. Mm -hmm. It just prolongs the life of the tank, the sensors, okay. and all the valves. So every time you go to a dump station, do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. All right, cool. Try not to let the stuff sit in there for a long period of time. Okay. If you get a chance to go to like a truck stop or a um, RV park or something like that, go ahead and dump it. Okay, yep. so let me, like for me, how I'm using this as an office. I'll probably be using bathrooms elsewhere. Yes. So let's say I'm not using it a lot. How often do I do that? So do again, Should don't I? let the stuff sit inside there. Okay. Um, if it's been a couple weeks or something uh -huh. like that, it's been sitting time inside there. It? Yes, definitely time to do it. Okay. So at least yep. like once a month. Yes. Do it. Okay. Yep. We give you inside our starter kit black tank chemical treatment. It's mm -hmm. an enzyme that you flush down the toilet. It's a little mm -hmm. baggie you flush down the toilet. Okay. It's going to break down the waste material inside here. Okay. Um, it's going to help it flush out of here. Okay. Um, after you've dumped your tanks, you must add another one of those tablets inside there. Now, you don't have to use what we give you. You can go to Amazon, and there's like a million different options out there okay. of stuff you can buy. Okay. Just find something you like and yeah. use that. 
Yeah, I'm trying not to make this video long, but I do want to, because I am a little intimidated by this because I've seen the movie RV. <laughs> yeah, so. don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Definitely don't do so that. So I don't want to be that too, Kyle. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you All can right, actually so. get fined for that, so don't do that. Oh, you can? Oh, yep. okay. Yep. All right. Okay, so keep going, sir. All right. So once we're done with that, we can mm -hmm. take our spray hose right here. So this is a push lock fitting like you'd find on an air chuck. Okay. So I've already got it pushed in there. I've got the water pump turned on. We have water pressure. Mm -hmm. I can take this over here, mm -hmm. come over here. Spray out my hose. Out. Okay. okay. Clean this off. You will want to carry gloves with you. Mm -hmm. It just helps keep this a little bit more sanitary. Okay. And then, so with this, with, should this be just a black tank hose or? This one right yeah. here? No. Oh, no. this is you just a general spraying off yep. hose. Okay. Yep. Now, I want to show you a trick to disconnecting this with water pressure on it that okay. no one knows about. Uh oh. So, if I, if you want to step back real quick, uh -oh. I'm going to okay. show you what this looks like. So, yep. I got water pressure on it right now. If yep. I disconnect this, it's going to spray me mm -hmm. like that. Right. So if I push lock this on there, in order to stop it from doing that, come over here and open this valve, mm -hmm. and then push in and pull out. Okay, hold on, let me, uh, yeah, let me see that. Do that right. again. So push lock so, in. Right. Now I have water pressure on this right now. You hold the, water the pressure. Pump is on. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to squeeze this, push in on the collar, and then pull out. Oh, so no water comes at you. Yep. Cool. Yep. Okay. Now, there's still water inside this hose. See, mm -hmm. there's nothing coming out. Yeah. Let this slinky, let it hang, open this valve right here, mm -hmm. dump all that water out. That way when you store this inside, oh, you're not getting a water puddle inside the coach. Right, okay. So I'm gonna let this fully drain. Cool, just like that. All right, I'm gonna set this right here. We'll come back to that. Okay. Yeah, this is cold water only. Okay. Mainly this is right here just so you can clean out your um, your septic system, stuff like that, your hose. Mm -hmm. You have another one in the back over here if you wanna look at that real quick. Okay. So this is your gray tank. Okay. So great again, time. same exact thing. You got a cap right here. You got a blade valve right here. Mm -hmm. That's going to dump your gray tank. Okay. So these are the dumps. Yep. Okay. So you have one here and one here. One here. Okay. Now, if you pull up to a dump station, it's pretty mm -hmm. much just a hole in the ground. It's connected to a sewer system. Mm -hmm. um, you are going to want to pull up and get kind of close over here. So okay. dump this one, and then once you do that, okay. drive a little bit forward. And dump that this. one. Yep. Go to okay. That one. Dump the forward one first, then the yep. rear. Okay. Don't forget to use your black tank flush and flush out your black tank. Okay. okay. After okay. you've done that, you can hop back inside your coach, ready to use it, take one of those tablets out of the bag, mm -hmm. put it in the toilet, flush the toilet, you're good to go. Okay. All right. All right. So when you flush and you put it in the toilet, flush it, and that's good, right? Yep. Okay. Yep, you got it. Okay. This right here is a solar power connection. So you have solar panels on the roof. Uh, right. Offhand, I want to say it's 220 watts. Okay. Um, if you want to add like another briefcase fold, uh, fold up solar panel, right. that's your connection point right there. Oh, okay. cool. Okay. So you so you can have something like fold up or whatever it is in the vehicle. You take it out, you plug it in, Correct. put it in the sun. I've got one around here somewhere. I'll show okay. you later what that looks All like. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can add that. This is just to trickle charge the battery. Okay. okay? That's the mm -hmm. same thing the solar on the roof is going to do. It's going to trickle charge your battery. Okay. Don't expect to run too much off of solar. There's a okay. lot of people that think you can run everything inside the coach off solar. There's a lot of people that advertise that. That's mm -hmm. not true at all. Okay. Okay. It's just and this model charge. is not just solar because I think you guys have a model that's like just purely solar panels. Right? Right and batteries. Well, is that what the lithium one is? Because yes. I think this has a generator on. Yes, this will have a. Uh, this one's gas or LP gas generator on this one, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have a lithium package as well. So the yeah. lithium, yes, the solar will charge up the lithium batteries, and then the lithium will run everything inside. Right, this but we're not, But that's not what we're doing here. Correct. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. This one's just a generator. Okay. Cool. Right. This is our shore power connection. Mm -hmm. This is a 30 amp, 110 volt connection. Okay. okay. Um, I do have a couple of adapters out here. I'm going to show you right. this too. Yeah. When you connect this up at an RV park, mm -hmm. you're going to have two options, either a 30 amp or a 50 amp connection. Okay. 30 amp is your round plug. Mm -hmm. This is a 50 amp connection. So this is called right. a dog bone. Slang term is a dog yeah, bone. Yeah, I think I have one of these in my Tesla. Good. Or something yep. like yes. that. So yes. So if you have the Tesla, then you have the adapter for this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so what you do is you plug this into a 50 amp connection and it converts it into the round 30 oh, okay. amp plug. So you want to have, I don't know if it, this comes with it, but nope. I would want to get this one of these. This is my demo one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Where did I get these from? Uh, Ace Hardware has them. Uh, there's okay. a Rural King down on 441. You can go okay, there and they get have them. them. Okay, yeah. cool. All right. This right here is another power adapter. So mm -hmm. this goes from a 30 amp uh, uh, male plug down to a what they call a 15 amp male plug, mm -hmm. but I'll tell you right now, please do not plug this into 15 amps. Okay. I've seen it cause issues before. Okay. Minimum 20 amp connection on this, 20. okay? Okay. So if you go to a friend's house or something and you need to charge your batteries up, but you can't run your generator because it's mm -hmm. late at night, hey, I need to plug into one of your outside wall outlets, mm -hmm. you can use this power adapter. We give you one inside the starter kit, okay. so you've got one. 
Um, try and plug into at least a 20 amp though. Make okay. sure it's a 20. Yep. I, I do actually have a plug like that next to my Tesla uh, You charger. have the 30 amp? Yes. Okay. It's like, yeah, I think I've got that one. So okay. I can plug this directly to that, right? Yep. So you can okay. plug this in there. Just 100% make sure it's 110 volts. Okay. okay. 110, 120 volt. Okay. Um, I've, I don't think it's even possible to plug into a 220, but if you plug into a 220, you're going to know instantly because it's going to pop every single bit of electronics inside here. Inside so, of the vehicle. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So Are they going to be burned or? Yes. They will oh. have to be replaced. Oh. Yep. Okay. So make sure it's the a 110. Will fast. Yeah. Okay. Make sure yep. it's a 110 and not a 220. Yep. I think my setup is for like a welder or something like that. So. It could be 110. It could be 220. Okay. I'll make sure um, of that. You have to look at it and see. Yeah. Now I do. Or I'll edit out that part of this video and pretend you didn't tell me. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> no, I won't do that to you. All right. So I do highly recommend you buy what's called a surge protector for this. I don't mm -hmm. have one here to show you. It's a box okay. about yay big, and it's got a cord that sticks off of it. Looks like this. Okay. That plugs into the wall, and then mm -hmm. your shore cord plugs into that. This is not your shore cord. This is a shock cord. You have a right. brand new one in the back of the coach. Okay. How yep. long is that usually? Fifteen feet. Fifteen. Okay. Yep. Cool. And then you can buy what's called a drop cord for it, which mm -hmm. is another fifteen feet you get out onto. Okay. But don't keep adding cords to it only add one extension yes. okay yes. Um, yeah by the surge protector it will prevent protect feedback from coming down the line like a lightning strike or something like that mm -hmm. and protect the electronics inside here okay you can spend as little as 40 bucks on one and yes they do work for even mm -hmm. though they're that cheap you can spend upwards of 400 dollars on one if you want all okay. the bells and whistles what's the name of a good one off off the top I of don't your head know off you, okay yeah okay what should i look for on it do you know surge um protector? any surge protector is pretty much going to work just an rv surge protector like i said ace okay. hardware has them okay lowe's and home depot used to have a rv section i think they've gotten rid of them and they're online only now okay so ace hardware ace would be your best bet okay yep all right cool all right okay now uh something i want to cover real quick Mm -hmm. um, you can leave this plugged in and let it charge up. You're mm -hmm. good to go. Once you plug this in, your inverter defaults in the on position and okay. start charging your battery. I'll okay. cover that more once we go inside. Okay. Um, if you're at RV Park, you can leave this plugged in. Um, every now and then, you will want to just plug in to charge your batteries up overnight. Put a good mm -hmm. deep cycle charge on it. Mm -hmm. um, at least once a month. Once Plug a month in, let it and do that. But yeah. if I'm driving it every day, does the vehicle charge it? The vehicle the will, yes. The, okay. So long as you have your disconnect in the on position. And again, I'll, I'll cover that. Okay. Once again inside. All right. Yep. This is your cable connection. So if you go to RV Park and they offer you TV, you can connect your coax right, right, right there. there. Yep. Sweet. So this is your input. Okay. We cover the black tank right here. Mm -hmm. This is city water connection. This is fresh water connection. So fresh water is going to fill up my potable water tank that I carry around with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I'm boondocking, I'm not permanently connected somewhere at an RV park or mm -hmm. at home or something like that, if I'm boondocking, this is how I have water inside the coach. Okay. okay. Again, you can use the app on your phone. You can view the tank levels. So you can stand here with the water hose and fill okay. it up that way. Fill it up. If okay. you overfill it, there is a check valve that will open on the tank and start spitting out from the bottom. Out. Oh, yep. okay. So that's how you know. Just real quick, I've heard boondocking. What's the quick definition of that? Is you are out in the boonies and you are using everything you're carrying with you. Okay, so you're not connected to like an Correct. RV park setup. Correct. Anything that's okay, cool. Yep. All right. So freshwater connection. This is mm -hmm. your city water connection. Mm -hmm. So if I can leave this hooked up to a water hose, mm -hmm. I would connect it right here. This is going to bypass my freshwater tank mm -hmm. and plumb everything inside the coach so that I have water inside here. Now, okay. something to remember, if I'm using the freshwater tank, water pump must be on because I gotta pressurize the system. Okay. If I'm using city water connection, water pump must be off because okay. you're using the spigot pressure that's coming inside, okay? Okay. Now, uh, we give you a pressure reducer inside the starter kit. It's just a little plastic one to get you down the road. There are higher quality uh, brass or metal ones that you can buy, which I do recommend because they last longer. Okay. Make sure you connect the um, pressure reducer to the end of your water hose and then connect it right that here to your in. coach. Yep. Okay. Okay. Most spigot pressures like 50 to 80 PSI, you, do, you really don't want to push it past 45 PSI on this coach. Okay. So the pressure reducer will step it down um, and make it last a lot longer. You have PEX plumbing inside this. I mean, it can handle a load, but you just don't want to induce a load onto it and okay. cause a leak. All right. If you do have the uh, water pump on and you're connected to city water pressure, you will cause a leak inside here. You gonna, will? You're going to overpressure it. Okay. Yep. So you got to really make sure if you're connecting this. So if you're connecting anything, you should just take that off, right? Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, cool. This down here is a propane connection. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple things I want you to pay attention to. This is for you right here. This is an on-off switch. Okay. Um, 
a lot of people like to shut their LP off if they're not using it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to tell you right now, it's up to you. Legally, if you mm -hmm. are driving over a bridge or through a tunnel, you must shut your LP off. Okay. I know certain states will fine you for it, like California, New York, New Jersey. I know that they will. Okay, so just once again, if you're going over a bridge or into a tunnel, that has to be off. Yep, LP has to be off. Okay. Your only off switch, I believe, in this coach is down here. Is down here. Yes, yeah, some of okay. these models, they have one inside too. I think yours is only okay. out here. So is a safe rule of thumb, just keep that off? Unless you're going to use much, it? Pretty okay. much. Now, there's a downside to keeping it off like that. I've seen where air gets inside the uh, Truma feed line, and mm -hmm. then you have to burp the uh, Truma feed line in order to get it to actually kick on. Okay. Until then, it'll constantly throw an error code saying, hey, I'm not detecting gas. Okay. Yep. All right. So, uh, but I how will, do you burp that? <laughs> pretty much just turn it on and off. On, on and off. off. Yep. Okay. Every All time right. you do that, it will it will try and pick up LP through the system and try and kick on. Okay. If there's no gas, it throws an error code. It's usually an error 212. Um, okay. It will pop up on the screen, and then if that happens, shut it down, turn it back on. Okay. Um, I have seen in cold climates where you have to do that a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll tell you right now, every RV we have out here, everything is turned on. We leave okay. ours turned on. Um, okay. I do know that there is some legality when it comes to that, because if you get into a wreck and you have your LP system on, there's a potential explosion hazard. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah. All this right. This right so, here. Mm -hmm. Good. Go ahead. This right here is a quick disconnect fitting. So if you want to carry around a propane grill with you, you obviously don't want to store the tanks inside the coach because that's mm -hmm. dangerous. You can use the 12 gallon tank that you have with the coach. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, you're going to buy a quick disconnect fitting. Again, I think Ace Hardware has them. Um, mm -hmm. Connect it right here, it's just a push lock. Oh, okay. This is your on off valve, so that's off. And then that's on. That's that pressurizes on. the line. Okay. Uh -huh. So you get, you can hook up a little barbecue grill out here. And oh, okay. That. So just buy the grill, run off of that. Correct. Okay, and b but get the adapter for yep. that. Okay. These two right here, you are not going to touch. Okay? okay. This is your fill. So the mm -hmm. LP tech, when he comes over here to fill this, he's going to spin this cap off. Mm -hmm. That's where he's going connect, to connect his hose. Mm -hmm. This is to vent off fumes right here. Mm -hmm. um, that way it actually takes the LP. So okay. These two you're not going to touch. If you loosen this and don't forget to tighten it all the way, you'll actually lose all your LP. Okay. So two questions I have here. How do you, uh, how do you keep this closed up or whatever? So there's a cover right here. Okay. Pull this cover up. There's a little bolt that's attached to a piece of wire right here. Mm -hmm. So pick this cover up, take this bolt and thread it into the hole right there, and that will cover this connection right here. Okay. Like that. All right, cool. And uh, and so where do you go to get that filled? Uh, here in town, mm -hmm. U-Haul is normally the easiest. Sometimes you got to wait in line though. Yeah. Okay. Right there All on right. 8th. And then I'm, I'm guessing like Walmarts and stuff like that, David. No, not really. No? no. Okay. Uh, they will fill the little portable propane tanks, like uh, for your gas grill, they, they won't, won't do these. these. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Ace Hardware not... will not do it. Okay. Um, we have a Davis Gas right over here. It's a little mm -hmm. mom and pop shop. If okay. you catch them with one of their techs there, they'll do it for you. It's actually very easy to do it there as opposed to U-Haul. It's faster. Okay. If not, U-Haul is a good place to go. Some truck stops will have fills as well. Okay. Or if you're living, at, like I live out in the country, just mm -hmm. look for a propane place and go So there. you can call around. The people mm -hmm. that deliver to homes, will sometimes come and drive their truck up and deliver oh, the RV. Oh, cool. Yes. All right, that works. Yep. All right. And what does uh, the propane power on this? This okay. one uh, does Truma only. So Truma is your heat. Okay. That's your hot water heater and your furnace. That's how you're going to make heat inside the coach. Okay. So heat and furnace, and if I wanted to use it to grill or something, I could connect yep. it to that. Okay. Yep. This right here is your storage too for your septic hose. Obviously, you don't want to keep this inside the coach because it does get pretty nasty and yeah. it does start to smell. <laughs> oh, okay. So you have so to store the storage outside. container. Yep. Okay. So I'm gonna pull this out of the way and then open this up. And okay, so you don't have one inside here, so you okay. just get one with the coach. Right. So we'll put that in there, and that's where it gets stored. Yep. Okay. Cool. Again, you're gonna want to wear gloves when you do this. Yeah, absolutely. And if anyone's noticing, this is a dually. So we've got two, two tires back there, which is awesome. Yep. So the good thing about a dually is it's easier to tow with a dually. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. This is generator exhaust right here. Mm -hmm. So when you run the generator, that's where the fumes are going to come out. It's right. Yeah. I think I heard it when they were testing the generator. So it, so it's up on the roof, right? Nope. The generator is underneath. Oh, the generator is yep. underneath? If oh, you look okay. underneath right here, follow the exhaust back, see the green okay. cover where it says own yeah. That's your oh, generator. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. It's quiet. Very quiet. Now, you can run the generator going down the road. You can? So if you have people with you, which mm -hmm. I'm actually, I want to give you incorrect information. This one, because okay. you don't have the rear seats in this. Um, There are seats back there. I was going to ask you if there's seat belts. Because uh, I, I think I saw a thing saying no one's supposed to be sitting back there, I guess, when you're... Not on that side. Let me double check once we get okay. inside here. I think this okay. one might have seat belts. Okay. Um, so if you're traveling with passengers, but more importantly, if you're traveling with pets, you want to mm -hmm. keep them cool inside. Mm -hmm. 
the AC in this particular vehicle on mm -hmm. the transits will mm -hmm. freeze you. Okay, mm -hmm. let me tell you right mm -hmm. now. Um, but if you have people or pets or something back here and you want to keep them cool, you can run the roof AC and run your generators you're driving on the road. Oh, cool. Yep. Awesome. That's sweet. And the generator feeds off of the tank on this, right? This the gas one, tank. Let me double check real quick. Because yeah. there are different models. This one is gas. So the gas tank feeds the LP, I'm sorry, the generator, the gasoline mm -hmm. generator. Mm -hmm. Once you get down to a quarter tank, it's not going to draw any more gas out of your gas tank. It, yeah. it will not pull everything out of your gas tank. It lets you get down the road to the gas station and fill so, it. So, yeah, so it'll save the gas tank. And this is probably somewhere, is it 25 or 30 gallons? 25. 25, 25. okay. Real quick, cool. something I didn't cover okay. over here. Mm -hmm. So you have shore power. Mm -hmm. And you have generator. Both are going to make 110 power inside the coach and charge your batteries up and run your appliances inside the coach, run okay. your AC, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You cannot use both at the same time. You can physically turn on the generator at the same time the shore power is on. Mm -hmm. There is an automatic transfer switch inside here that's going to um, uh, default over to shore power if it sees the shore power come on. Okay. I will tell you right now, I've had to replace, I don't know how many of those because they, they fail. Oh. Do not rely on that, okay? Okay, unplug one or the other. Correct. Okay. So either run the generator or run the short power. Okay. Never do both at the Never same time. Never do both, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. If that's plug if that plugged in, don't run the generator. Yep. Okay. So let's say you're driving down the road, you've got the AC on, and you're mm -hmm. running the generator, obviously, to run the AC. Mm -hmm. um, you pull up to your campsite, and you're ready to start setting up camp. Mm -hmm. Shut down your AC, which is your mm -hmm. high amp draw. Okay. Shut down your generator, mm -hmm. plug into short power, and then turn your AC back on. Okay, right. I got it. Okay, cool. Uh, there are magnets on these doors right here. Right. This door is the only one that opens all the way. Okay. So if we come around to the other side, okay. you'll see there's a latch right here. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna unlock that, mm -hmm. and then this door will open all the way. Okay. And that magnet and it goes to the side. Yep. So right. that magnets can pre prevent a gust of air from coming and right. slamming this door. So this here. one doesn't open like that. This one does not because you have the bike rack option. Oh so right, because it would. Yeah. Yep. Oh, so you've got that uh, locked off. Yep. Another thing okay, with this, cool. so yes, you can take that bike rack off if you don't want to use it. Mm -hmm. I'll show you that in a second. Mm -hmm. And you can take the screw out if you mm -hmm. want to open that door all the way. Mm -hmm. It will hit the awning though. Oh, okay. So yep. also because of the awning, you don't want to mess with that. Correct. Okay. This is a note to my future self. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> don't force that door open. Backup camera is right there in the middle. Right. Okay. All right. Trailer hitch is down here. Okay. Uh, this, so there is a tow hitch yep. attached to this. You do have the four pin connection. Mm -hmm. And a seven pin connection right there. Cool. All right. How much what, what weight can I tow with this? This one I believe is 5,500 pound towing capacity, 550 pound tongue weight. Okay. So the downside to a class B is you get less storage than you get on like a class mm -hmm. C or class A. You don't have the outside storage compartments. A lot of people like to buy a basket back here mm -hmm. or what's called a turtle shell, yeah. which is the box that goes on the back. Um, so you can attach that right there. Just remember 550 pounds is your, is your weight limit, including the weight of the basket. Okay. Oh, okay. So you have to cons so wait. That's for everything that's in this vehicle. No, no, no. Five. Just just oh, hanging on off that. this. Yep. Just hanging off that's yep. five fifty. Yep. Okay. Now you can tow a small vehicle with this. We've towed a. We got a Honda CRV that we use as a tow vehicle. We've got a Honda Fit and a Jeep Wrangler. So yeah. if we send a driver to go deliver on these vehicles, he'll tow a vehicle. That way he can drive back. Yeah. Okay. So a vehicle like thirty five hundred pounds, something yeah. like that's good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I might tow my R my R eight. I did see you pull up in the R8. Yeah, you saw that, <laughs> yeah. huh? Yeah. You were, you were behind me in traffic uh, oh, really? last week, yeah. <laughs> was I, I saw your headlights, was and I was like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, okay, that's uh, nice. <laughs> apologies. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I enjoy it, man. I'm a car guy. I love oh, it. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yep. You, ever, you ever drove an R8? I have not. We're going to have to make that happen. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, we'll make that happen. sign a waiver before that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, cool. So I could tell that if I wanted to on this. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Real quick, up top right here yeah. are your privacy shades. So I'm going to stand on this. Right. I'm going to grab one of these down. Oh, okay. In, in these, that's what those are. Just a storage okay. compartment for it. I'm going to mm -hmm. close this door. Okay. This is spring loaded. So it okay. stays in split. In so that just clicks back in. Yep. Like that. There you go. Okay. And now it won't open any further until I unlock it again. Okay. Okay. Cool. These just Velcro into place. So oh, I'm okay. fold that. You are actually missing. Oh, yeah. One, one of them's missing. Okay. Yeah. Let, me, let me get that for you before you take the vehicle. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you would Velcro that in place, right. and then Velcro down here, and that's your privacy shade for the rear. Oh, and cool. And you have one in that compartment for this and door as well. And, oh, okay. And so it's cut for each window? They're the same. They're the same. Oh, it's the same? Okay, yeah. cool. Awesome. So that's what gets stored up there. I guess there's a, there's a bunch of space to put other stuff in there with that? No. 
No, pretty okay. much it fits this, and that's it. That's what it's for. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I do recommend once you go to start using this, you need to use your privacy shades. Just take them down from there. It's kind of, it's a pain in the butt. Constantly go up yeah. and get them. Yeah. Um, you do have a little bit of storage back here. This right. is an elbow that you can use over your um, your dump right there. Oh, that was for the Some dump. places require that you actually drive up to the dump station like that and oh. dump it. Okay. So that's what that's for. Okay. Um, carpet for your front, your table leg for your front, your brand new shore cords right there. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. Uh, you do have the screen back here. This is spring loaded. Just pull it down. Pull that down. You got two little tabs right here that this is going to meet to. Okay. Pull it down past that and lock it underneath it like that. Okay. okay. And just catches it. Yep. To release okay. this, you're going to push down and tilt backwards away from you. So push, tilt back, and then release it. Okay. Cool. Again, spring loaded. Don't just let it go because you can break the mechanism. It'll just snap. Okay. So hold it, it. Goes back. Yep. Okay. And if you do find yourself going in and out back here and this thing's in the way, you can actually slide that out of the way. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah, that's nice. So if you have this open, if you're in shade like we are now, mm -hmm. you can have this open back here, but keep bugs and stuff from flying. Correct. In. Okay. Correct. Yep. Nice. You do have two speakers right here. These speakers are connected to the dash radio. Okay. And then you probably noticed on the inside that there's four speakers total in the back half of this vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, the front two actually go to the Jensen, which is your home entertainment system inside here. Okay. The rear two on those are connected to the dash radio. To the dash. Okay. Yep. Uh, that's interesting. I, I guess you can hear it all the way back here. Or it gives you bass or something, maybe. <sighs> it's not much bass. No. Much no. Um, all right, it's so all good. <laughs> something I've told people in the past, because I've had a lot of questions about, hey, why can't I just make the surround sound? Mm -hmm. The Jensen itself is wired up for surround sound, but mm -hmm. the wires for these, these speakers are ran to the Jensen. Later on down the road, if you're like, hey, man, I really want surround sound inside mm -hmm. here, you can take it to an audio shop mm -hmm. and they just have to tee into those wires or eliminate them from the front dash and then wire them to the speakers. Okay. Um, there is wiring behind the Jensen that you can actually make that happen with. Oh, cool. All right. Yep. Yeah, we'll take a look at the Jensen here in a second. All right, nice. I like this uh, setup back here. This is one of the reasons why I got it because you've got the stand up shower here, which is pretty tough um, and gives me a lot of room. And then I guess there's, you know, there's the bathroom, there's the toilet in there, and then a sink that folds up, which we'll show you guys here in a sec, probably. Yeah. Okay. Real quick, this is the starter kit we give you. Oh, nice. Okay. Comes in the vehicle. Four rolls of single ply marine paper. Now you do not have a macerator, which is nice because this mm -hmm. is more stuff that can fail. Okay. Um, but even so, only use the single ply paper in your system. Single no two ply, no baby wipes, no wet wipes. It's got to be single ply. No, okay, cannot go into the system. Correct. You right. can gum up those blade valves. Those valves I showed you that you opened to dump. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen before where those get gummed up with stuff, and then they fail and they have to mm -hmm. be replaced. Okay, so if you do any of that, it's got to go in a separate garbage Correct. that doesn't go through the system. Correct. Okay. 25 foot water hose, mm -hmm. that's your pressure reducer. Okay. That's the plastic one I was telling you about. Like I said, you will mm -hmm. want to upgrade to a nicer brass one or just some other metal one down right. the road. Okay. Black tank chemical treatment. Right. Open this bag up, there's little tiny baggies of chemical inside there, just drop it into your uh, toilet and flush it. Okay. 10 foot sewer hose, so this is yours that comes with the coach, and that's your power adapter. Okay, there's the adapter. All right, very cool. All right. Um, the macerator, what is that? So you don't have a macerator. A macerator mm. is a poop grinder. So it takes everything out of your black tank and your gray tank. It's got blades inside of it. It looks like a garbage disposal almost. Oh, okay. And it grinds that up and then pumps it through a smaller hose into the actual dump station. Okay. Um, I don't have one around here I can okay. show you. But there isn't one in this, no. which you said is a good thing because yes. I'm guessing that's a failure point. Yes, they fail okay. all the time. So okay. I tell people all the time, please only use single ply. They don't listen to me. Oh, and okay. then they put two ply in there. Yeah. Um, I've pulled a diaper out of one before. Ooh, the guy ooh, no was good. traveling with kids, and their kids flushed a diaper Why? down the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it gets disgusting. So I mean, it's the same stuff that you would use if you have a like we have a septic, or is it different from the septic stuff? Different from septic. Different from the yep. septic stuff. Yep. Okay. So specific single ply marine paper. Marine paper. Yep. It'll okay. be it'll be sold as RV and marine toilet. Tissue. Okay, and you can get that RV supply place. Or yep. Yep. Okay. So RV Supply, we give you four rolls in there just to get you down the road. That way you have okay, something cool. to use. Okay, cool. That's expensive stuff nowadays. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, it still is. Yeah. <laughs> it still is. My wife had to go find some the other day. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, All right, cool. So that pretty much covers the back half. I'm going to go ahead and close this up. Close yeah. your driver's side door first. Your passenger okay. side door latches onto the driver's side. Oh, okay. You do have another release right here so you can open that door from the inside. Oh, okay. See that? If you're coming out, there you go. All wheel drive Eco Boost, guys. Transit 350 HD. Go. So, this is your bike rack. You can store two bicycles on here. You are limited to 100 pound carrying capacity on this. Okay. So, 
two regular road bikes, something like that, you won't even get close to that. But if you're like an electric let me, bike. Let me flip around this way, sorry. Yeah. So we can get better lighting. If you have like okay. an electric bike or, bike or something like that, those weigh 60, 70, 80 pounds, depending on the model. Yeah. Um, you cannot put two of those on here. Okay, so if you have electric, just one. Correct. Okay. If you have a standard road bike, mountain bike, something like that, you can easily put two on here and okay. some little bit of extra gear, okay. and you're okay. Okay, so um, this is removable, you yep. said. Is it easily, so yep. is it easily removable where yep. someone could take this and take my bikes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, it is, unfortunately. Yeah, so. Spin these know. two knobs off, spin right. these two knobs off. And, and it's good to go. Off. Yep. Okay, but so you don't want to put really expensive bikes on. I would not leave them on there. Okay, yeah. yeah. If you're walking away from this for some time and you have those, like Storm I've got some side. really, yeah. Yep. Storm I've got side. some expensive bikes. I'll probably get some bikes from Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Because my plan, since ways. this is my office, I'll carry a bike on here. Okay. And then sometimes, I, you know, like every morning, I'll go ride the bike and get some exercise. So, there you go. Uh, but yeah, you probably don't want to leave an expensive one on here. No, I, I would not it's because it out. could be easily stolen. Yeah. So I'm gonna All right, so away. those just unscrew. And um, I guess there's no way to lock them. No, not really. They don't give you a lot of hardware okay. for that. So how do these come out? So this one, when this comes from the factory, they actually store this underneath so that it can't flop around. Okay. So I just undid it and I brought mm -hmm. it out. That way we can bring this arm out. You can okay. bring this arm out. This is for your inside bike. This is for your outside bike. Okay. So to release this, you have two tabs right here, two locking tabs. Mm -hmm. Pull this outwards. Mm -hmm. like that. Pull oh, this I one see. Outwards. Okay. These are going to break on you. I'm telling you right now. They are going to break. When okay. When they do, call me. I'll get you some more. Okay. Yep. So I'm gonna flip these up out of the way and then pull this down. Pull that. Oh cool, I see how it goes. Okay. Yeah. Just like that. So then you would put the um, tires in yep. here. So these two knobs right here, I'm mm -hmm. gonna loosen this one, mm -hmm. slide this forward. Oh I see. Okay. And then you strap your rear wheel right here, your front wheel right here. Okay, cool. And then from the other side you can reverse that have your front facing that way. Okay. So I'm gonna loosen this one. Have this slide forward. And then, like I said, this armature is going to go to your inside bike. Mm -hmm. This one's going to go to your outside bike. And then just straps. Yep. And these just ratchet lock down. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. All right. All right. Very cool. It's pretty simple. Yeah, I'm definitely going to use that. Yeah, they're nice. Yeah. We've had a lot of people that have bought these RVs, custom ordered them, mm -hmm. but never got the bike rack. And then they'll look online and be like, oh, man, I want that bike rack. And we've yeah. installed them. So we oh, get cool. the bike rack separate and install that. Oh, is there an upgrade to this to the bike rack? or Not no? this okay. one, no. Okay. But if I don't want this here specifically, I could just take it off, Correct. keep so it in the vehicle. Or, you're you know. on the road, you're like, I know I'm not going to be using my bikes. I don't want to mm -hmm. leave anything on, on here. You mm -hmm. can actually take this off. Like I said, these four knobs right here, spin those off. You can pull the entire bike rack off and leave it at home. Okay. Now, a word of advice from what I've seen in the past is mm -hmm. no matter how much you tighten these things down, mm -hmm. this is going to flop around. Okay? okay. Once you tighten it to the bike, it's okay. Yeah. But if you don't have a bike attached, you just let it hang right here. This is going to move around on you. I do and recommend I, you get a small little bungee cord and bungee cord this down. Okay. All right. I'm going to keep some one. bungees in there. Yeah, that's good okay. to have. And so then these, so this kind of just goes back up like that or yep. something. You got it. Let me see if I can. Is that it? Yep. Snap. Oh, there you go. All right, cool. You got it. So again, you do have the magnets on this door. But like yeah. I said, I would not open this door all the way, especially if you're going to use the awning. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, I've seen some people remove the awning. Why do they do that? They just don't use them. Okay. We've had people custom order these vehicles and not get an awning at all because they know, hey, I'm never going to use this. Okay. Is I know that, the wife said she's using it. Yeah. Does that mess up aerodynamics, this awning? Not or? Really. No. No. Okay. It's not been affected that much. Okay. You do have your engine exhaust right here. Oh, okay. This is the exhaust. Yep. Okay. This black piece you see right here, that's mm -hmm. your actual house battery inside there. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's get a look at that. So that's, uh, how big is that battery? Physically or power? Power. Uh, offhand, I don't know. Okay. Um, I have to look up specs on that one. Okay. I know lithiums are about 200 amp hour, but I don't recall what this one is. Okay. Two 110 outlets right there with cool. GFI protection. Right. So if, you if you're sitting outside, you plug something in? Exactly. Okay. This is your Truma exhaust. Uh, okay. This does get very hot when you're running it. This is the heater. Yep. So if you're burning LP to make uh, heat, your fumes are going to come out right here. Okay. Um, if you're on electric, um, some of the excess heat is going to come out right here. Okay. If you overheat the Truma, it will actually shut itself down, put it into itself into a protection mode, and it will vent all the heat out of it to cool itself off. Okay, cool. Can So at any time, can I plug into that, or is there a switch that stops that? So no. like, can someone just come and plug into my thing and yes. charge their phone up? Yep. 
Really? So if you are plugged into shore power like we are right now, we uh -huh. have 110 going to this. Okay. If I turn the generator on, then we have 110 going to this. Okay. Or if I'm boondocking and I just turn the inverter on, um, it will send power to this as well. Okay. But if I shut the whole vehicle down, there's no power. Correct. Okay, Correct. cool. Yep. I just want to make sure no one's <laughs> charging their iPhone. If you leave there. the system on, yes, they can. <laughs> okay. Yep. yep. All right. Cool. So let me open this awning up real quick so you sure. can see it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want someone driving their Tesla up next to my thing and then plugging well, their Tesla. Well, you can't do that to it. There's no way you could draw that much power. I, yeah. I wonder if I could plug the Tesla up and charge it. Let's see here. Here we go. Is the only thing coming out? Nice. Now, you do have lights on this. Oh, lights. Nice. That's cool. That's nice. I like that. It's one button to push it to have it come out. One and people don't track. use this. This is cool, man. There's a lot of people that don't. A lot of people that don't want to use them. Yeah, I like nice. this. Yeah, I personally like it, especially I'm if you're setting up camp. Yeah, you can plug in right here. You got right. a TV. Yeah. Hanging off of this right here. Get, yeah, I can see myself it. working under this somewhere. It's very somewhere. nice, yeah. especially in more temperate climate or a day in Florida like this, where yeah. it's really nice out. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. In the winter months like this, it's great to work outside. You do have the built-in wind sensor on this. Okay. So if a gust of wind comes and shakes this awning, it does have to be pretty substantial. It's going to auto retract in order to protect itself. Okay. Now, a word of advice: if you have the key in the ignition, uh -huh. um, it kills all power to this awning. It doesn't matter if it's extended or retracted. There's oh. no power going to that awning. It's a safety mechanism. So if you're driving down the road, it's not going to accidentally extend on you. Okay. Oh, I see. Carefree. Okay, so that's to keep this from opening. Yep. Carefree had an issue with them in the past, so they've okay. since gone through and done two wiring updates and a software update that's now killed all power to it, the ignition's on. Okay. Um, so you don't want to leave the keys in there with this open because it correct. won't retract. Correct. Okay. Yep. So let's say I have it extended and I have the mm -hmm. engine on because I'm breaking down camp. Mm -hmm. A gust of wind comes and shakes this. It's not going to auto retract in order to protect itself. Yeah. You also do not want to rely on this as the end-all, be-all safety mechanism for okay. this. Um, it, be proactive. If it's windy out, go ahead and retract this awning. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen, you saw how slowly it comes out. Mm -hmm. It retracts just as slowly. Okay. I've seen a gust of wind come and pick the awning Still up rip over it the up. vehicle. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but this will be great though. I yeah, can see absolutely. situations where I need some shade. Absolutely. Maybe I'm going prone over here or something. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, do some August shooting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this will be great. Okay, yeah. cool. Right, so I'm gonna go ahead and retract this. Yep. So that button is where in here? It sits on the Firefly screen. Okay. So we see where it says awning extend or mm -hmm. retract. If you want to go ahead and touch retract. Okay. okay let's do this one. What? And there it goes. Yep. It's coming in. Sweet. Okay. Cool. So I'm gonna shut down the lights on it real quick. Mm-hmm. Back to home screen. So we're gonna go to the interior now with Kyle. Right, so the setup here, Kyle, I think you um, you shut everything down? Yes, everything's turned off right now. We're going to treat this as if we've been storing the vehicle. Now we're ready to use the vehicle and take it on a trip. So okay. everything's turned off. I'm going to show you how you go inside, how you turn it on, and what order, um, and how you get everything ready to, to use the vehicle. Okay, cool. Right. Let's do it. So open up the side, side door, pull this all the way back. You're going to feel it catch right there, right there, and it's locked in place. If you're parked on a hill and you're not fully engaged, It'll and slide down. Side yeah, and yep. I know that, um, so this door is tough to pull from yes. the inside, right? you do have to put some effort into it. Okay. Same thing when you're closing. you got to make sure it's completely closed. If you don't close it all the way, it's going to let you know in the dash, hey, okay. your slide door is open. Yeah. yeah, I would maybe put a grab something to grab there to help give you some leverage to pull it. So right here, what I do is don't we take the handle like that? Just slam it. Okay, yeah. Okay. I think it's easy from outside, not so easy inside on the inside. Inside's a little more difficult. Yeah. You do have um, this handle right here. I usually mm -hmm. put my fingers right here, mm -hmm. catch it right there, and just slam. Got to get a good grip on yep. it. Okay. So it does lock in down here, right? Yep. So okay. It catches right here. Okay. You do have the two handlebars right here to help you pull up. Mm -hmm. um, you do have the screen door right here, mm -hmm. and you do want to lift it and set it on top of this J hook right here. Okay. Hold on. You see that hook? That. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna lift up, set it onto oh, it. I see. Okay. Right. If I can do it. Like that. There you go. So okay. it stays in place. Okay. So now you Lift can leave that open. door open, circulate mm -hmm. air through the coach, not yeah. get bugs inside. Now, when you release this, same thing as the screen in the rear, control it as it goes back because it is spring-loaded. So I'm going to mm -hmm. lift up and then release it. Okay? 
Okay, so you want to hold it as it goes back. Yep. Okay, cool. You do have an outside light right here. So if you're turning, you're coming up to this thing, can't really see it because it's at night, you can turn that light on. The key does need to be in the on position on this one. Okay. Um, you do have a fire extinguisher right here. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to walk inside. Okay, right behind you. You want to follow me in? This cabinet door right here, I'm going to lift this up. Inside here, I see a battery disconnect switch. I have two positions. I have use and I have store. Rock it down for store because I'm storing the vehicle or mm -hmm. rock it up into use because I'm using the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, I'm ready to use this vehicle. I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna rock it into use. Okay. It's gonna provide power to the Firefly Multiplex right here. This is your five inch screen. You do have a larger seven inch screen back there above that bed. Okay, hold on. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna show you this one for now. Okay. So this powers up the Firefly Multiplex right here. You do have five screen options right here to choose from. This is home. This is our home screen right here. Mm -hmm. Starting from the top left, see where it says Light Master? This is the master controller for all of the interior lights. I can either turn them all on or all off. Okay. okay? Or I can come in here to the little light bulb. I can touch that. I can individually oh, turn on different systems. On okay. Yep. Oh, cool. And okay. if I remember correctly, this one will remember the position. Yes, the setup that yep. you like, okay. Yep. The ones that have the up and down arrows on them are dimmable. So this is this one. I'm gonna hold this down, and you can see it dimming the light now above me. Oh, okay. Oh. And you just release it wherever you want to leave it. I'm gonna bring oh, cool. it back up to full brightness, like okay. that, and just oh, let go. Oh, that's nice, okay. Go back to the home screen. Awning controls right here, so again, extend. Mm -hmm. We can hear the awning extending right now. Mm -hmm. I can stop it, partially if I wanted to, and then retract. Now, with the key on in the ignition, there's going to be a red bar that comes over this with a little lock symbol on it saying mm -hmm. awning locked by ignition. You cannot control the awning if that ignition is on. Okay. All right. This down here is temperature control. This is ambient inside the coach, which is 72 degrees, and my set point, which is 71 degrees. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, the AC is not on. The heat's not on. Mm -hmm. I can come down here to the thermometer. I can touch that. Mm -hmm. And if I want to turn the AC on, I would touch cool right here. Blue mm -hmm. is on. Gray is off. Mm -hmm. Fan speed is set to auto. I can also turn the fan speed on low or high if I wanted to. This works just like your thermostat at home, though. Okay. Um, we're pretty close to our ambient, so it's mm -hmm. not really going to kick on. So yeah. I'm going to turn this down. Now, you see the little frost symbol right yeah. there? It tells me that the compressor's on. Right. And then you saw it go from L to H. That was from low speed to high speed. To high, right. The closer you get to your ambient, um, within about three or four degrees, it's going to go to low speed. And then once you get up to your temperature, it's going to shut down. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, and that fan, fan's going. You can see I it's can kind of loud right now. This yeah. is the 110 AC. You right. don't have the pro air system. My personal preference is I like this one. Mm -hmm. um, this one is louder. It does consume way more power, but it's more... It's moving that air, yes. though. I can feel it. Yes, yes absolutely. absolutely. Okay, cool. So I can put on low speed if I that's, wanted to. That's going to be down. necessary in Florida. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'm going to leave it on auto for now, okay. and then I'm going to turn up my uh, set point. Mm -hmm. We can see it go to low, mm -hmm. like that, and then if I want to shut it off, I touch cool again and give it a couple seconds, and it will power down the system. Okay. Um, if you are plugged into shore power and you're running your AC, mm -hmm. and now, hey, I'm about to leave and drive down the road, I'm going to start my generator up, you do have to wait a good 15 minutes before you turn that AC compressor on. Okay. The, or the system on. The head pressure on the AC could be so high that you can actually overload the generator by turning it on because it was just running. It's got high pressure in it right now. If you turn that um, AC on and you've not given the generator time to idle out mm -hmm. and to even out the output of it, you can actually shut down the generator. Okay. Um, now, if it has not been running, give it about two minutes on the generator, let the mm -hmm. generator run, then you can turn your AC on. Okay. If it has been running, probably minimum 15 minutes. Okay. Really want. Just wait a while. Yep. But in the meanwhile, if you are driving or something like that, this the the AC here is going to work, right? Correct. So okay. And like I said, this AC in mm -hmm. the uh, Ford Transits, it's going to freeze you out. It's yeah. very powerful. So now that's only up front, right? None yep. of that goes back there, except so for what, some of it will. Yeah. What shifts um, back there? This window right here is the only one that opens back here. Okay. But you can lift up your vent air fan mm -hmm. and actually get some circulation through it to get it moving. Yeah. Or or put some fans or something if yep. you want to do that. Okay. All right, so we'll give it a couple more seconds. AC will shut off. These right here are your tank indicators, your tank levels. Mm -hmm. Fresh tank we can see is at 45%. These mm -hmm. are accurate within about 5%. Okay. Gray tank is empty. Black tank is empty. LP mm -hmm. is full. A full LP tank is only 80% though. So keep oh, that in okay. mind. It does vary by temperature. The colder okay. it is, the more you can get. The warmer it is, the less you get. It's about 80% fill. So you have a 12-gallon tank, so 10, 10 and a half gallons. Yeah. So if I was going to go camping right now, mm -hmm. I would need to fill everything up. 
Well, you just fill up your fresh tank because these are fresh. holding tanks. Oh yeah, so those are whole. Okay, yeah. so just so fill as you fresh use your water, water system, yeah. as you use the toilet in the back, get these filled. are gonna start getting filled. Oh, okay, yep. so I keep an eye on that. Correct. And then when that gets filled, I need to figure out where to go uh, yep. dump them yep. out. So like I said, you can view the five inch screen right here, the seven inch screen over there, okay. or if you download the app on your phone, you can view yeah. the app on your I phone. I think I downloaded that app already. I saw it you playing like with three it. Bucks. Yeah. I saw you playing with it because I saw the pin could have been changed. Oh, you did? Yeah. Well. No, I don't think I changed anything. Yeah, yet. it's not the original one. It's not. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Well, as soon as you, in. as soon as you connect with that app, it asks you to change the pin code. Oh, okay. Yep. All right, I'll yep. have to check that again. Yep. Okay. I'm not going to show that on camera, but okay. you can go in there and change it. Yeah, we'll it. do that off camera. Yep. Okay. Uh, water pump button is right here. Mm -hmm. So if I want to pressurize the plumbing inside here, mm -hmm. turn the water pump on. Okay. Now it was already pressurized before. That's why it's not kicking on. Just okay. give it a couple seconds. It pressurizes. This. Okay. Now I'm going to open this sink up right here. We're going to turn on cold water. You can hear the pump running now. Yeah. Okay. Right. Same thing if I went to hot. There's a little less pressure on hot because the hot has to go through the truma. And there's okay. some pressure loss on it because okay. of that. Cool. Again. That's awesome, man. I don't plan on using it unless we're actually traveling, but yep. it's cool to have it. You know? Absolutely. Now, yeah. again, if we are on city connection, mm -hmm. that pump's got to be turned off because I can't overpressurize the lines. All right. Okay. If I'm uh, boondocking, so or... I need to make sure. Let me just zoom in. So that's right now grayed out. So yep. it's off. Gray is off. Blue is on. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Okay. These are battery power indicators right here. House is your ch uh, is your coach side. Chassis is your engine side. Okay. We are plugged into shore power right now. Mm -hmm. It is charging both. If you run the generator, it will charge both, and then running the engine will charge both. If this disconnect is in the used position. Okay. 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 Um, which good, it is right now. Yep, good, good battery voltage for house. Um, you're gonna see this climb up to about 14, 14, 4, 14, 5 ish mm -hmm. if the battery is very weak. Okay, um, it's gonna spike like that to charge up, and then as the battery starts getting full, it's gonna come back down. You okay. can see it's at 13 1 right now. Okay, uh, that's probably accurate within about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a volt, okay. which is pretty but good. But it says it's full though, right? So if it's yep. fully green. Yep. So if it's not, it starts edging down from that Correct. green. Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. And then chassis again is your engine battery. Okay. And that one can be upwards of fourteen seven, and that's fine. Twelve six to fourteen seven on your chassis. Okay. House is going to be anywhere from like twelve five to fourteen four, fourteen five. Okay. So it's monitoring the battery that's underneath here. Yep. And it's monitoring the battery under this seat. Correct. Okay. Yep. These are your generator controls right here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to do it just yet, but these are one button start, one button stop. Mm -hmm. Again, we are on shore power right now. You mm -hmm. do not want to turn We don't want to do it. Yeah, we right. want to disconnect that outside. Yep. Okay. And then you have your total run time on the generator, which is 5.3 hours right yeah. now. All right. Um, consult the owning manual that's in your bag that comes with all the uh, service mm -hmm. uh, records and stuff like that. It'll tell you the exact time. But after about 50 hours, you want to do an oil change on it. Okay. Yep. All right. So that oil change, can I bring it into you guys? Yep. Or? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. We'll do it. Okay. This is your automatic generator start. Right now it is disabled. Mm -hmm. um, you can turn this on if you are boondocking and you don't plan on plugging up, you can turn mm -hmm. this on. Mm -hmm. What this does is it's looking at your house side battery. It's mm -hmm. looking for a voltage drop over a certain amount of time mm -hmm. and it will automatically turn the generator on and charge your battery back up until it sees a voltage for another set amount of time and then it shuts itself off. Okay. If I come over here to the circle with a lightning bolt, mm -hmm. These are my AGS settings right here. Okay. This is a good ballpark to get you going, but you can come in here and fine tune this as need be. Okay, let okay. me make sure I get that. Okay, so that's a good setup right now. Yep. Okay. So right now, if it sees 12.5 volts for 20 seconds, it's gonna turn the generator on. Okay, for a okay. minimum runtime of 10 minutes, maximum runtime of 240 minutes. Okay. And it will stop once it sees 14 volts for 15 minutes. Okay. All right. This is a quiet time. Some RV parks say you can't run your generator between between like certain hours of the night oh, because you can't wake people up. Okay. You can pre-program that. Set that there yeah. for that whatever that time exactly. is. Exactly. Okay. Back to home screen. So you have AGS button right here. You touch this disable to enable it. It's mm -hmm. going to say, "Are you sure you want to do this?" Just hit confirm. Mm -hmm. Or you, you can make do sure it you're not connected to correct. the correct. Correct. Yeah. To shore power. Yep. So that's it for the home screen right there. Mm -hmm. We've covered the AGS. I showed you the lining. The exterior are the only ones that are not controlled by the light mm -hmm. master. Those you do have to individually come in here and turn those on. Okay. Now when you turn on that porch light, it also turns on the underglow underneath the step right oh, there. Oh, there. Okay. Yep. Oh, cool. So turn those off. Okay. Thermometer again. This is your AC control. Mm -hmm. This is your trimmer controller. This is for heat. This is for AC. Okay. Okay. Last, we have our settings page. 
This is to access the bubble app. I'm not going to touch it because it'll bring up your pin number. Mm -hmm. um, Vega Touch Mirror. I'm sure you've already downloaded it. Uh, it used to be like 99 cents in the Play Store. I think they're free now. Uh, I think it was three bucks. Oh, they went up in price. Yeah, went up. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you, man, where's the where's the discount code? But uh, <laughs> there wasn't there wasn't uh, even an option of that. Well, so. talk to me about that later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Network diagnostic right here. You're not really going to play around with this. This uh -huh. is for us as techs to come in here and view what is the computer controlling, what is it telling it to do. Okay. Um, you can change from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Cleaning mode turns the screen off for 15 seconds, so you can come over here and clean it. Wipe it Same down. thing for that one over there, and okay. that way you're not pushing a bunch of buttons as you're cleaning right. it. Okay, yep. so there's the other one. And screen brightness, and you can adjust the clock right here. Okay, let this focus. Okay. All right, do you feel comfortable with this? you have any yeah. questions on it? Uh, no, I'm, well, one question I would say, so these uh, batteries, how long can you run off of them? before they need to get charged up. So. Uh, that's going to vary a lot. Okay. Um, if you are just running off of house battery, mm -hmm. um, you're not going to run the AC off that. You can turn your inverter on and invert the battery power to 110, but anytime you put a high load on that, you're going to drain that battery very fast. So okay. microwave's going to drain it, which is over okay. here. Um, yeah. AC is going to drain it. You can run some of the other stuff inside here. Uh, you can run the, the TV's 12 volt, mm -hmm. but you can plug into an outlet, run like a coffee maker, mm -hmm. hair dryer, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, you can do that just off battery voltage. Um, the more stuff you have turned on, the faster you're pulling down on that battery voltage. Mm -hmm. So electrical. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to figure it out just because I'm going to be using this as an office. Yep. So I'm just trying to figure out like how much running. So you're plugging in engine. laptops and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so how much running of the generator engine, etc., will I need to do? So keep an eye on it. Turn mm -hmm. your AGS on. Okay. Have it set up so hey, if there is a battery drop, it's automatically mm -hmm. going to kick that generator on and start okay. charging your battery up. Okay. Um, as far as how long can you go on that? It's it's going to vary a lot. You're going to have um, like all these lights are LED. Mm -hmm. They're low amp draw. Mm -hmm. All together, I want to say it's six or seven amps across everything, mm -hmm. um, just the lights alone. But the more stuff you have on, the faster you're depleting that battery. Okay, okay? so let's say I'm running this in a typical summer day. Um, I would use AC and then I'm using a computer. Okay, so if you're running AC, you're either plugged up or you're mm -hmm. running the generator. Yeah, okay. You okay. have to. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. The engine battery only controls the front dash in the engine. Um, it's like your standard car battery. This one's an AGM flat plate battery. Okay. Um, so if I wanted to save some power or gas or whatever, I'm better to just open all the windows and everything yes. and maybe run off the battery of my laptop yep. until I'm like, oh, it's too hot. Let me. Yep. Okay. Got you can it. turn this vent fan on right here, pull yeah. your screens closed, that yeah. way you're not sucking bugs in too. Okay. Um, open this up, open this side window up right here and you can mm -hmm. circulate air. On a day like this, it feels really good. It's, yeah, it's it very does. comfortable. Uh, but you guys have an awning here. <laughs> yep. Yep. Absolutely. So, okay, cool. Um, if you are Southwest US or you're in Florida in the middle of summer or something like that, mm -hmm. you're gonna die in here without AC. I'm telling you right now, yeah. you've got to run the AC. So either yeah. you're plugged up or run that generator. Yeah. Um, the generator runtime, it's gonna come down to how much gas do you have in your tank. Mm -hmm. This thing, luckily, is very efficient. It's gonna sit gas. Mm -hmm. um, you can run it for a long time. Okay, so yeah. that's all stuff we'll do videos on and. <laughs> yep. And get everything. Yeah, lots of okay. testing because you got to figure out what works best for you. Yeah, in a typical work day. Yep. Yeah. Yep. How much power am I consuming? Mm -hmm. um, on this one, so this is your solar controller. Mm -hmm. I typically tell people do not touch this. Okay. Um, this is automated. It's going to do its own thing. Right now, it's indicating there is sunlight getting to the panels, even though we're under an awning right now. Oh, it's still picking okay. up some UV cool. radiation. There's one or two panels up there. Two panels. Two, okay. Yep. This is indicating that the panels are charging the battery. And this is mm -hmm. um, voltage indication right here. It shows like you're depleting the battery, but that's not really what that means. That's just voltage. Mm -hmm. But if you come over here to amp volts, I mm -hmm. can push this. I can see total amp draw. We're plugged into shore power, so mm -hmm. that's taking the bulk of the mm -hmm. load right now. Mm -hmm. It's only drawing 0.1 of an amp from the battery. Okay. And I can come over to amp hours, so amps over time. Mm -hmm. So I can leave this on and view this. Uh, I have to look up and give you the exact amp per hour mm -hmm. uh, capacity of that so, battery. Right. And you can get an idea of how long you can Yeah, and then this. I could probably... So the, the, the solar panels can run the AC or... No. 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 Generator. No. Right. The, okay. the 
solar panels are only going to trickle charge the battery. Okay. Um, on a good day where it's bright and sunny out like it is right now, if we're out in the middle of the sun, um, 9 to 13 amps is about what you're going to see. Mm -hmm. Multiply that by your voltage. That gives you your wattage. Mm -hmm. That gives you an idea of what you can run. The mm -hmm. fridge is going to draw about 4.2 amps okay. um, when it's first kicking on and mm -hmm. cooling down. Mm -hmm. Once it gets cold, it's mm -hmm. about 2.1 amps that it's going to run on. Okay. So you can run your fridge and you can run your lights just on solar, but that's pretty much it. Oh, okay. All right. So that's just for, yeah, so AC, going to need that generator. Correct. So we'll find out real fast. Once it gets, right now the weather is nice, so. Yep. Okay, cool. So solar panels is everything on here, right? Yep. Real okay. quick, just on this one, I do want to cover, this is your Wi-Fi Ranger switch. Okay. So you turn that in the on position. Mm -hmm. um, you don't really want to show that, but that's your network name and password, mm -hmm. so you can access that. Mm -hmm. um, again, battery disconnect switch here. This is the Truma controller. So mm -hmm. this is how you're going to make heat inside the coach. This is going to make hot water, and it's going to. This is your furnace. It's going to make heat inside the coach. Okay. What I want you to pay attention to is that black line right there. Okay. Anything, any icons you see above that black line are mm -hmm. systems that are on, and then below the black line are going to be menu options you can interact with. Okay. Right now it's displaying the time, 2.01 mm -hmm. p.m. Mm -hmm. You have two control buttons right here. You have a control knob right here that you can push in or spin clockwise or counterclockwise and then you have a back button, mm -hmm. okay? So let's say I wanna turn the furnace on inside here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna push in on this control knob. It's gonna bring up this menu right here. I can spin this knob. You see how I'm highlighting whatever it is I yeah, want to Yeah, it's over flashing. Over. Yep, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna spin it to the RV with the thermometer, which is mm -hmm. my furnace. Let me see if we get in closer here, okay. All right, mm -hmm. I'm gonna push in. Right now it displays off. I'm gonna spin it clockwise. It starts at 40 degrees. I can go all the way up to 86. Okay. So right now ambient is 73. So if I push in to confirm this, we now have icons on the screen right here above that black line. The flame is telling me the furnace is on. The gas bottle is telling me I'm set to LP and I'm on fan speed one. Okay. Now, because we are plugged into shore power right now, you're going to see an icon pop up in the bottom right corner here in a second right there. Mm -hmm. That's going to automatically switch over from LP to electric. Oh, okay. Yep. So I don't have to use the LP to heat Correct. this. Oh, cool. So okay. on the generator and so, on shore power, mm -hmm. it will sense, hey, I've got 110 coming inside the coach. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shut the LP off and conserve resources okay. and use the electricity to make heat. Okay. So if I'm plugged in like at my house, mm -hmm. I can use this to heat Correct. or I can use it also to cool or the cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Absolutely do that. Oh, cool. All right. Now. At any point in time, because we have the furnace on, the flashing symbol is telling me that the furnace is activated and it's starting mm -hmm. to get up to temperature now. Oh, okay. Once it reaches temperature, it will go solid. Okay? okay. At any point in time, I can come over here and spin this knob and adjust that temperature. Okay. But I, what I want to make sure you understand is once we come in here and we make an adjustment from turning it off, you mm -hmm. have to confirm it. If you do not push that control knob in a second time to make your confirmation, it, it didn't defaults go. off. Okay. Yep. And that's not a thing you hear or anything like that. So you'll just feel the heat Correct. getting warmer. Correct. It doesn't really make any noise. Yep. Okay. The next one over is the water with the thermometer. That's mm -hmm. your hot water. So hot let's water. say I want to heat the water up. I'm mm -hmm. going to push in. I have four modes. I have off, eco, hot, or boost. Mm -hmm. Eco is about 104 degrees at the Truma. Mm -hmm. Hot is about 140 degrees. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you right now, anything past 115 is uncomfortable. Okay. Uh, boost is 140, but it gets you there quicker. Boost, okay. you do not want to use in Florida. Okay. You can actually overheat the Truma that way. Okay. Yeah. All right. In Florida so. or Southwest U.S., if it's mild uh, temperatures, you, hot's your maximum. Okay. Okay. Boost, you're going to use in a cold weather climate where it's snowing you and, hey, I need hot water now. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to leave it on hot. I'm going to push mm -hmm. in again to confirm it. Mm -hmm. uh, I did have this on earlier, so it may stay solid. Um, if the water has cooled off, then you'll start seeing that blinking here in a second as mm -hmm. it's getting up the temperature. Okay. So right now we have furnace on, mm -hmm. hot water on, it's set to hot. The gas bottle uh, indicates we're on LP, but we have a little plug indicator, so it's on 110, mm -hmm. and then fan speed one. The fan speed is just how fast am I circulating air through that Truma. Okay. So if fan speed one is too low, I can come over here to the fan icon, push in, and I can turn it on high. Mm -hmm. okay. So one or two. There is a third option for boost once it reaches temperature. Okay. And you can hear the fan now running. And that's just forcing air through the Truma. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, if you are not using the Truma, if you're not making heat, it's very important you come in here and turn this off. Even if I disconnect from shore power right now or shut the generator off, it's going to automatically switch over to gas. And it'll run. You're starting to consume resources at that point. Okay. Yep. So turning it off. Yep. So I'm going to push in on the water icon, spin this until it displays off, and then confirm push it. it. Mm -hmm. Go to the uh, RV. Push in, spin this all the way down till it says off, and then confirm it. Okay. Now I have no icons above that black line. That means mm -hmm. the system's off. Okay. And you can leave the screen right there. Okay. Okay. 
This little timer down here, the reason why you have a clock on this, you can set a start and stop point for the furnace, the hot water heater to come on at a certain time and turn off oh, at a certain okay. time. Yeah. So if it was cold and I'm getting up every day and getting in here at 8 o'clock in the morning. You can set it to come on maybe 30 minutes prior and start making heat. Okay. Is Now, is that controllable by the app or only nope. what's on this box? Only the Firefly is controllable by the okay. app. Okay. All right, cool. There is a different uh, model of this um, with a different version of the Firefly where you can do that, but mm -hmm. this one does not have it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Fair enough. So if we look back over here real quick. So again, okay. solar controller, you're not going to mess with this too much. Mm -hmm. This is automated. It's going to do its own thing. Yep. This is your Xantrex inverter. Um, right now, if I push that button, we can see we have alternating current coming mm -hmm. into the coach. It splits off into two legs. Mm -hmm. One leg goes to bypass and powers up my appliances. Mm -hmm. So my AC, my microwave, any of my wall outlets and stuff like that. The other leg goes through the charge portion of the inverter and is now charging my battery, my house battery. Okay. This one also charges the engine battery. Okay, cool. It's giving me a battery voltage indicator and we are at float charge right now on that battery. That battery is mm -hmm. fully charged. Okay. All right. Cool. Now, when I come and I plug this into shore power, this green light's going to come on the top. See where it's got the uh, little power pole indicator mm -hmm. right there? Mm -hmm. That's telling me I've got 110 coming in. If I'm on shore power or running the generator, this will automatically come on. I do not need to turn it on. Okay. It will do it on its own. Okay. If I want to turn the inverter on, though, without running the generator, without plugging into shore power, I can come over here and I can push this button in, and that turns it on. It's not going to do anything right now because it's in override mode right now. Mm -hmm. So dip pin switch button in is on, out is off. Okay. okay. And if I'm just inverting that green light, it's going to come down here to the middle portion right here. Tell me I'm pulling power from the batteries through the inverter to make 110. To go, okay. Yep. To go wherever it's going to. Yep. And then if you have okay. a fault code, the red light's going to come on right there. Okay, cool. All right. And then this, this, this solar on off, why would I take the solar off? You are not going to mess with this too much. This okay. is for us if we have to work on it. You can't oh, okay. work on solar panels with them getting energized. You've right. got to either put a blanket or a towel over them and cover mm -hmm. them up before you can disconnect them. And then come over here and, and shut them off. off. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. This is a temperature sensor for the Truma. So okay. this is where it's picking up temperature inside oh, the coach. Oh, from right here at this door. Yep. So real quick, this is the temperature sensor for the Firefly. This is how it's picking up temperature inside okay. the coach. Right by the speaker. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, I noticed some of these lights, like uh, like this one here. Yeah, oh, actually, when I got close to it, oh, you can actually mess with it. But it's got a USB. That's cool. Yep, yeah, all these have USB ports, so you can plug in a phone or a tablet and charge them up. If you mm -hmm. touch it just once, it turns on the uh, night light. Mm -hmm. Hold it down for a second, release it. It turns on the reading light. Oh, cool. Okay. Yep. So you have a light right here you can use at this countertop. Mm -hmm. You do have the microwave right here. Mm -hmm. okay. Simple microwave. Two drawers down there. You do have the Novacool fridge right here. Right. Um, something I do want to show you is there's a safety catch on this door right mm -hmm. here. If you're driving down the road, especially if you have a lot of stuff inside this uh, door, make mm -hmm. sure that safety catch is engaged. It's on so it yep. doesn't come flying out. Yep. There is kind of a trick to opening it. Mm -hmm. You want to lift up here, push down here, and then pull towards you. Okay. You want to try so, that? Yeah. So, um, so lift down, pull up. There you go. So that's like two, it's got two safety catches on it, Correct. basically. So this one, if that doesn't work, this will work. Correct. So, so if you're taking the corner or something like yeah. that. But if I, I can see it, yeah, okay. But if you want it, so open. you push down and pull. Okay. Yep. There is temperature control on the left side of here. Okay. All the way in the back. Um, I will tell you, um, this one is left side. Yeah, left side yeah, over I here. See it. So yeah. between four and five on this is a good happy medium. Okay. Um, if you don't have a lot of stuff inside here and you go past five, you're actually gonna start freezing it. You're gonna freeze it, yeah. okay. If you have a lot of stuff inside this fridge, you will wanna crank it up to between like six and seven. Okay, so for my use that I'm gonna use the refrigerator for as, as an office, mm -hmm. I just need to make sure this is, cause this is always gonna be on then, right? Yep. So if long I'm as this disconnect is on, okay. this fridge has power. Okay. Yep. So like if I'm home and I'm shutting everything down, if I have this plugged in, mm -hmm. it'll do it. If not, it'll just pull off of that, right? Correct. So if you're plugged in at home, you're on shore power, yes, your inverter is going to be on. You also have to have this disconnect on. Okay. Yep. All right. So if I don't have, so for like right now, let's say I don't have the right connections and everything at home. Yep. It's just going to run off whatever power the vehicle has. Or? So the house battery power, it's mm -hmm. going to pull from that. The solar is going to help trickle charge that. Mm -hmm. If you have your AGS turned on and mm -hmm. that battery voltage drops out, because mm -hmm. it will, mm -hmm. um, it will automatically start the generator and you can use it that way. Oh, okay. So it'll be okay. I don't have to really worry about it. No, but if you are walking away from the coach, go ahead and shut it down. Okay. So as long as you're not opening this fridge, it's going to stay it pretty should be cold. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay until the next day yes. or whatever yep. okay all right yeah that's probably a thing because I'll, I'll definitely keep drinks in there yep 
Um, you know, but if you, like, like I said, like if this. you can't plug up and you're walking away, I would definitely go ahead and put that in store mode. The solar is going to bypass this disconnect switch and still mm -hmm. charge the batteries. Okay. Yep. But it's the oh. only one that will. Oh, okay. All right, cool. That's awesome. Yep. Um, where are we going next? So this real quick, I'll show you. We do have hot water. Mm -hmm. I was running it earlier. Give it a second. Uh, okay. the pipe. There you go. It's starting to get a little warm there. There you go. Yeah, I can feel it. Okay. All right. We'll close that up. Okay. Have you ever used a magnetic wrench in the action top before? Yes. Okay, so you're familiar with this? Mm -hmm. Definitely peel that sticker off before you do it. Yeah. <laughs> this right. does not indicate it's on, just that it has power going to it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work until I actually put a pan or pot on here, but I can mm -hmm. turn this on. Um, I do have a heat and temperature control right here. I can make adjustments with a plus and minus right here, mm -hmm. and I can set a timer on it. Cool. After roughly 10 seconds, it's going to auto shut off because mm -hmm. it's not sensing anything on here. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Probably not going to use that too much, but Lola will. Yep. I'm more of a microwave kind of guy, <laughs> but I'm a more of a, of a you know, yeah. fast food. <laughs> you and me both. Believe me. <laughs> yeah. so you do have manuals inside this compartment okay, right cool. here. So this is everything mm -hmm. for the coach side. Yeah, the manuals. Yeah, cabinets. Yep. They do have the soft close hinges. I could probably put patches on that if I wanted to. I don't know if that felt. Let's see. Uh-oh. Let's see if it sticks. Oh yeah, there that's going to be the patch wall. <laughs> <laughs> you guys will see that here in the future. Here, here you go. Make sure you hold on to this. Oh, I will. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Cool. Nice. So this window is the only one that opens. Because mm -hmm. it opens, you do have a bug screen. Okay. Right there, that I can pull it from the bottom. Okay. All of the windows do have privacy shades on though, so you oh. can out from the top. Okay. So this one has both. Yep. Because it opens. And okay. all of these only have the privacy shades. Okay. All right. Okay. So these on this side don't open either. No, these do not. You don't okay. want to because that's where that door opens. Okay. So now if the door is closed, does the door have a window that opens? It does not open on it. Actually, okay. I, I'm wrong. This one does have a... Okay, a let's door. take a look at that. Let me go back here. Let me reach out here and grab the door. Yeah, see, that's one of the things. Yep. Okay. All right, so there we go. This is normally in the up position like that to keep it from accidentally opening. You're going to flip that down and then you pull on that. Oh, okay, cool. All right, so you can get straight pass through, mm -hmm. and or you could just put the screen over, and then and then get your pass through. Yep. Cool. Okay. Looks like the TV. How the TV kick on? I just turned it on. There's a button okay. right here on the bottom. Inside okay. this compartment is your Jensen, which I'm gonna cover here in a second. Mm -hmm. You do have two remotes, so TV remote and mm -hmm. Jensen remote. The TV is picking up signal over the air right now. Mm -hmm. There is an antenna booster right here. You see the little mm -hmm. green light that's on right now. Mm -hmm. If this green light is on, it's activating the TV antenna and it's picking up signal. If I turn okay. this off, we're going to lose signal on the TV. Okay, cool. Okay? Yeah. If I am plugged into coax on the outside of an RV park or something mm -hmm. like that, I've got to turn this antenna booster off. Okay. okay? If I'm not plugged in, booster's got to be on, and then I have TV signal again. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, let's turn that down so we don't get it on the yep. volume or something. We don't get it on the video. I'm going to turn it okay. off. Okay, yeah. All right, interesting. So that's that could get you even cable or whatever, yep, right? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. If you have like an Amazon Fire Stick or something like that, you want to plug mm -hmm. into, there are HDMI ports in the back of the TV. They are. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now, something I didn't really cover when we were on the outside over there. Mm -hmm. When you open that door up, there's a wall. There's a mount right there that has a cable output right there. Yes, I saw that. You can pull this mount off. Okay. Like that, Just and actually it set it onto that mount out there. Okay. You got to disconnect your wiring and stuff like that. Yeah. So that wiring that powers this is one of these, I'm assuming? Yes, this one right here, your 12 volt. 12 volt, okay, cool. Okay, so you'd want to probably un unplug all of this mm -hmm. and pull that with yep, you. Yep, take okay. it with you. Okay, and then there's a, there's a 110, there's yep. two 110 plugs right there also. Cool. Now there is a catch on this mount, so I can mm -hmm. push this back in place and let it catch right there. Mm -hmm. That way when I'm driving down the road, it's not going to accidentally swing out on me. Mm -hmm. Um, this is your Jensen. This is your home entertainment system right here. Mm -hmm. This will do AM, FM. Uh, it'll play CDs. It'll play DVDs. It'll play Blu-rays. I can Bluetooth my phone to it. Cool. And we have auxiliary inputs right here that I can use as well. Okay. If the TV is on and I put a DVD or a Blu-ray inside here, it will automatically switch over on the TV um, and start playing that movie. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn it on briefly just so you can see it, but I'll turn the volume down. So, and if I had a hard drive with movies on it, I just put it here, plug it into power. Is there any power in here? Or Not inside here. Not okay, inside so here. it has yep. to come down and go Correct. to that. Okay. Correct. Is there a pass through in right here? Right back here on this left side. I know it's oh, kind of hard to see. A, okay. So, yeah, we probably are not going to see it from the camera, but okay, there you go. Yep. All right, cool. And you can fish it out through the bottom over here and plug stuff in. Okay, cool. That's now, nice. we're on FM right now. Mm -hmm. um, I can go to mode mm -hmm. and change my different inputs on this. 
Mm-hmm. HDMI arc is the TV. I can actually play from the TV through this into the speakers that are underneath the cabinet. Oh, sweet. Yep. Okay. Something I want to show you real quick. So if I turn this volume up, see how it says zone A? Mm -hmm. um, this has zone A, B, and C. B and C are not used in this coach. They use the same radio in like class C or class A. We have front rear speakers. Oh, okay. B would be your rear. C would be your outside. This is just zone A. But if you accidentally bump the zone button right here, mm -hmm. I can get to zone B and C. Mm -hmm. So you may come in here, you're on zone B or C. It's not connecting. Yeah, you're turning the volume up and you're like, man, I have no output from this. What's going on? Mm -hmm. You gotta be on zone A. Click the zone. Okay. Yep. Somebody's like grinding something out there. But yes, they are. Yeah. And there's some serious cutting out there. Yeah. Huh. All right, yep. cool. Close That's a cool up. setup. The rest of these are just cabinets. Yep. Okay. All right, you do have the max air vent fan right here. Right. So on this one, I can spin this open. There's a remote on the wall over there too mm -hmm. I can use. So right now, if I just open it up, I'm doing okay, it manually. So you turn that, okay, yep. to open it. And oh, I can I close see. it manually. So if the motor fails, I can turn this. Mm -hmm. Now, if I go to the remote, I'm going to push the on button right there. Make sure you point the remote at the, at the fan. Awesome. This does have a built in rain sensor. If it gets wet, it's going to automatically close the fan. Okay. And uh, shut, we'll shut the fan off and close that cover. Okay, so if, in case you forget to. Uh... So is it practice to not have this on if you're driving? Correct. Okay. If you're driving down the road, you don't want this open. The air pressure going over the vehicle can break that armature right there. Okay, so you want to make sure that's closed if yep. you're driving. Okay. You can adjust fan speed. So I can turn it down. I can turn it up. Okay. Um, this is just to open and close the cover if I don't want to turn the fan on. Um, this one only pulls air out. There are some models that do both in, in and, out. and out. This okay. one only does out. That's okay. Everything out. So okay. if I push the button, close it up. Okay. And just remember, you don't want that open while you're driving. Correct. Okay. You have another reading light underneath here, so touch it to turn on the night light. Hold it down for a second, turn it on, turns on the reading light. Mm -hmm. uh, your 7-inch screen, this does exactly everything that one over there will do. Mm -hmm. And then once you connect your phone, it's all the same. The, the app looks like this on your phone as well. So here's the bathroom. So you do have a cabinet to your left. Right. Drawers beneath that. Right. It's a good size cabinet. And, uh, you can take the shelves out and use that clothes hanger here if you want to. Oh, you well. can. Okay. And uh, this is in the shower area. Is Correct. this somewhat waterproof? Because I'm sure it's going to get moisture. Not really. No. no. Okay. <laughs> you want to make sure you have that shower curtain in place. Um, okay. And then just keep that closed. Right. Now, and this this curtain goes somewhere. all the way around, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. You have another vent fan. If you look right here. You. Yep. Mm -hmm. Push that handle up and there's a little black button. Push that black button and we'll turn the fan on. Push this up. And where's the button? To your left. To my left. Yep. Somewhere in here? Yep. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Uh, is it? Okay, I see it. There we go. Okay. Okay. Yep. So push it up to open it and then pull it down yep. to close it. Okay. That one will not auto shut off. If you pull it down, you got to make sure you touch that button. Okay. Yeah. Don't drive down the road with that. If you look to your right, starting at the bottom, you do have your toilet. Right. There's a lever on, on the uh, side closest to you. Okay. You want to open the lid real quick. See this? All right. So if you push that lever down halfway, it's going to add water to the bowl. Okay. Make sure our water pumps on real quick. Okay. So halfway. And then all the way down is going to flush it. Okay. Oh, okay. All now, the way down opens that. Yep. Now okay. you see after you flush it, how it adds a little bit of water onto it. Mm -hmm. Make sure there's water on top of that seal, that little ball valve seal at all times. Okay. If you don't have water in there because it, it evaporates because you've been storing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. One, it's going to dry rot that seal. Mm -hmm. It's going to brittle. It's going to crack. And then two, you're going to get those fumes back inside the coach. Oh, okay. So that's all part of the seal from keeping the fumes. Yep. Out. And that's why before you use it, you want to put a little bit of water in there. Yes. Okay. All right. Cool. Put this down. Okay. Yep. Here's the sink. Gotta move the faucet out of the way. And I see there's a um, little drain cap. Little drain cap for this that goes in. Here, let's see how that goes. There you go. Okay. And cool. If you go up from that is your medicine chest. You can open that window right there. This goes up. Okay. Does it hold itself up? It does not. Okay. All right, so you can just open it and get what you need to get. Are these magnets on it? These big circles? 
Uh, no, there's a port for the hinges. That's where the hinges are. Oh, that's where they're hidden. Yep. Okay, yep. cool. Is this uh, thing, is this very magnetic or are we talking about aluminum inside here? It's or? mostly aluminum. Yeah. Mostly it's aluminum. Mostly. Okay, so it's not a lot of places you can hit magnets, mm -hmm. hit with magnets then. Okay. And then this shower uh, comes all around. Yep. So there's a track for the shower to go all around, which you want to make sure you're using. Correct. Right, okay. And, and then, then there's a drain down there, I see. Yep, that's for the shower. Okay. And then you do have a door, so you can close this off. You want to pull that door from right to left. Yep, so it works just like the J-hooks on these screens. Mm -hmm. What you're going to do to open that door is push in a little bit, and then tilt it away from you, and then release it. And don't just let it slam back. And get Carry it. it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. That's good. So, and then uh, the AC here, this, the AC is only controlled by the, um, by the control, right? Yep, the Firefly controller, and it's 110 only. Okay. You do have the uh, control, the uh, flaps that you can close um, and direct the air if you want to. Mm -hmm. This also does have the built-in filters left and right, mm -hmm. so you can pop those off. Those are oh. reusable filters. Take like a wet rag, and you can wipe them off. Can and wipe use those them. down. They okay. do break down over time. Once they break okay. down, you can get new filters. Just replace them. I'm yep. guessing you can get that in an RV place. Yep. Okay, cool. You can get it from us too. We can order it for you. Oh, okay, cool. And then we've got these uh, seats slash beds here. So um, are there are there um, seat belts? Let's any look real of these? Quick. Okay. Let's see. None on this side, and none on this side. So no, no okay. seatbelts on this. So your yeah. your capacity is just the two seats right there. Oh, okay. Yep. So you can't have people sitting back here when you're driving. No. Okay. There's no way to strap them in. Okay. All right. Cool. Good to know. Real quick, these are your shades. Mm -hmm. You have one big one aside here that does your front windscreen. Mm -hmm. You're gonna take your visors, flip your visors down like you would in your car. Mm -hmm. you put your windscreen, your uh, shade in place. Mm -hmm. You do have one for the driver's side and one for the passenger side right here. There's kind mm -hmm. of a trick to doing it. You want to open your door first, put the shade in place, and then close your door. Okay. They are magnetic though. They'll stick to the uh, the frame. Of so the say door that again. You need to open the door. Open the door. Stick the shade in place. Okay, and, and then, then close, close the door. The door you want to see it, it real okay. quick? Yeah. All right. Let me grab these real quick. Okay. And, the, and that's what's in these bags. Yep. Okay. Set it back over here. This one is silver sides out. Okay. That's your driver's side. So I'm gonna walk outside and go to the driver's side. Real okay. Quick. Yeah. I'll be. I'll stay here and get to capture that. Open the door. I'm gonna unfold this. Now there are magnet magnets inside this. It's gonna stick to that frame. Oh, I see. Okay. So then you have the magnets and the uh, pressure from from, yep. so I'm from the, the lip of it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. That's your privacy shades. This will also help keep some of the sunlight out. Um, mm -hmm. Again, southwest U.S., you're in Florida, something like that, middle of summer. You may want to put these up just to help mm -hmm. keep it cool inside here. Mm -hmm. And so the AC is not working as hard. Yeah, yeah. If I've got it parked or something like that, I probably would just put yep. everywhere, just keep everything, yep. uh, keep everything going. Okay, cool. Driving is just like driving any uh, Ford vehicle, I'm assuming. I know there's um, Apple CarPlay if you yep. connect your... If you connect the USB, yep, and then that button that we were talking about for the camera will be right there. Correct, correct. Let me grab so the keys can, real quick. You can put the front camera on. I'm gonna go ahead and start the vehicle up. Yeah. So, I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory. If you plug into any of the USB things. Then you'll you'll get the Apple CarPlay, and then if you press this button right here, then that's that your shows front your camera. front camera. So there you go. That's pretty cool. I don't know if it does anything else, but uh, that's so good. this will also do the rear camera, but you cannot access it from there. Yeah, you'd have to actually put it in here. In reverse. Yeah. So I'm gonna put my phone on the brake. Put this in reverse. It's gonna bring out the back camera. Yeah. So that's your rear camera right yep. there. Now, do you see that green line right there? Mm -hmm. Again, those are the radar sensors that are around the vehicle. Mm -hmm. 
telling me how close I am to the object. So right now it's picking up that back wall right now. Yeah, and if you get too close, it'll just start going red probably. It'll go uh, green, yellow, red, and once yeah. you get to about um, yellow, it's gonna start beeping at you. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. So that is your funnel that you need for your gas. So if you're gonna uh, pour gas into it from a gas can, you've gotta stick this funnel down inside the flapper valves that pushes both flapper valves open, and then you can add gas to the system. If you do not use this, you will spill gas everywhere. So this is the Lagoon tabletop. You can spin this around wherever you need to. So if you wanna set this up as like a workstation, you can put your laptop right here and use it. Mm -hmm. uh, you could also tear this down if you don't need to use this. Let's say it's in the way, you need someone to use this bed over here. Mm -hmm. um, you can loosen this uh, that way. Mm -hmm. Now, let me show you something too, especially with this one right here. If I go to tighten this or loosen this, it's going to hit over here. Mm -hmm. What you can do, it's easier to see right here if I do it, is pull out, it disengages the teeth, you can free spin it, and then let go of it, and it'll latch back it's in, in place. Better position. Yep, okay. And then you can maneuver, maneuver however you need to. So I'm going to loosen this up. You can pull this off. Okay. And then this leg down here. So I'm going to pull out, right. let go, loosen, and then slide so it off. So it's got a little slot there. Um, the tabletop itself has a slot as well, so right. if you're storing this, you can store the leg with it. Oh, cool. Okay. So you would move this So all one. of this stuff can store. Uh, and then I'm guessing, where does that go? Maybe behind the driver's seat or something? The secondary tabletop is behind the driver's seat, so there's oh, a okay. pedestal right there between the two seats. Right. So those seats do swivel, and you can put the table leg in place right there. That table leg is in the back driver's side corner over here behind that, the bathroom. Yeah, we showed that earlier. Yeah. Okay. That tabletop that's behind the driver's seat mm -hmm. is going to sit on top of that. Yeah, it goes right there. These newer models come with Lagoon table, and they've not really designated a spot for this. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much wherever you have space for it. Okay. Show it. So if you're driving, probably the best place is in there. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, you, you probably want to secure that, make sure it's not moving around. around. Okay. Right. Um, plus, if you're going to be using this as an office, mobile office, you want to make sure it's set up ready to go. You can put your equipment on top of mm -hmm. it. Okay. So now under these, if we can do that at all, what's under here? So there's, um, oh, underneath sorry, this one this is out. electronics. Okay. So you, you do not want to access that. Same thing for this one. There's actually a water tank underneath here. So there's, there's nothing, plumbing. you can't, there's no storage or anything. There's a little cubby right there okay. on that side. And right. There's a cubby. Little cubby. Just that one, just that one. Yeah, just there. Yep. And then I see there's like a, a, a panel to go in yep. right there on so that So these side. are your 110 breakers. Okay, okay. And these are your fuses. These are called ATO fuses. You will want to carry some around with you. ATO fuses? Yep. Okay. Yep. Any auto parts store will sell these. Walmart, um, some of the bigger box stores, stuff like that, you can buy them. Okay. And they're all marked out for what mm -hmm. it's for. So if you have any issues. Correct. With anything, okay. And then these are heat vents. Well, these are vents right for inside here, allows yeah. us to breathe, um, right. especially for this one. This one's for the actual inverter itself. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So, and probably like in an office situation, I know I was talking to Nick, you can probably remove this and build a platform or something that yeah. you can set up here. There's the number of custom stuff people have done to these mm -hmm. is astronomical. Yeah. I mean, the sky's the limit on these. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be figuring out, I think we're going to try to figure out some kind of bed thing so we can make mm -hmm. this all into one big bed if we need to do What that. I've seen people do is they actually build a frame and mm -hmm. set the frame right here and then they get us another mattress that fits inside here. Yeah. Or I want to say this is queen size. Mm -hmm. When it's all said and done, I think you can fit a queen size inside here. Oh, cool. All right. Let's see. Is that it? What That's else? It. Okay. Awesome. Let's go outside and wrap this up. All right, guys. So there you go. That's it. That's the uh, full walkthrough here with Kyle at uh, Sun Sunshine State RV. Um, this is the 2021 Coachman Beyond that we just went through. I think the only thing left is really how the dash works and stuff mm -hmm. like that. That's all similar to your other Ford Transit exactly, exactly. vans like 2019, 2020, etc. So we're not going to do that. But that was very detailed. Thanks a lot. I really Welcome. appreciate it. Not a problem, Hank. Uh, if I run into anything, I'm going to be coming back here <laughs> and getting the rundown. So thanks a lot for watching that. I know this is a long video. I appreciate folks watching it. I'm going to use it myself. Don't forget to subscribe here to Stranger Palooza. Thanks a lot. Okay, Kyle, Sunshine State RV, we're out. Peace.